Welcome to Science with Father, a YouTube channel dedicated to sharing science with you in a fun and interactive way. Enjoy! <laughs> On a tabletop, imagine drawing a circle with an area of exactly one square inch. Now imagine a column from the one square inch that travels straight up into the air. Air is thickest near the Earth's surface due to gravity, so as you increase altitude and reach two miles, you should stop and acclimatize. Your heart will increase blood pressure and allow you to use parts of your lungs that you rarely use. Keep going up and at three miles of altitude, it is hard to breathe. And at five miles, we reach the death zone, where breathing assistance is absolutely necessary. At 10 miles of altitude, we are above 80% of all Earth's air. Finally, way out at 300 miles, we reach outer space, where there is no air. This 300-mile high column contains a lot of air. All that air produces a lot of weight at the bottom of the column. In fact, it is 14.7 pounds over that one square inch. 14.7 pounds is about the weight of one baby. So on the surface of the Earth, atmospheric pressure literally equals the weight of one baby over every square inch. A spread out newspaper has sides roughly 24 inches by 23 inches. That means a newspaper has a surface area of 552 square inches. Since one square inch corresponds to the weight of one baby, that's a total weight of 552 babies on the newspaper. Don't believe me? Check this out. Why did the ruler break and not damage the newspaper? The trick is to strike the ruler very hard and quickly, so fast that air cannot get under the newspaper. If the ruler were pressed down slowly, air would get under the newspaper, equilibrating the air pressure above and below the newspaper. However, if the ruler is pressed down rapidly, like with a hammer, air does not have time to get under the newspaper. So there's literally a weight of 552 babies on top of the newspaper, breaking the ruler. It's impossible to lift 552 babies with a single ruler. Here it is again in slow motion. Here's another example of air pressure. First, water is added to the aluminum can. The water in the can is then boiled. When steam comes out of the can, all the air in the can has been replaced with hot steam. You could not survive in the can if you were inside it because not only is it very hot, but there is no air. It is all steam. The pressure of the steam in the can is the same as atmospheric pressure outside of the can. The pressures are balanced inside and outside the can. When the can is inverted and placed into the ice water, the steam inside the can condenses 
turning into a very thin film of water along the insides of the can. There is very little gas left inside the can. In other words, a vacuum is created inside the can. Vacuums do not have pressure because they do not have gas. With no pressure inside the can, atmospheric pressure crushes the can from all directions with a weight of 14.7 pounds over every square inch of the can. Here it is again in slow motion. Let's try something else. In a plastic bottle, let's put a balloon and try blowing it up. <laughs> it is impossible because air pressure builds up inside the bottle when the balloon tries to expand. The air inside the bottle cannot escape. So let's use a tack and puncture the bottom of the bottle. Now air can escape and we can blow up the balloon. When we stop blowing and don't block the hole, air re-enters the bottle while the balloon returns to being unstretched. This time, let's blow up the balloon, then block the hole with a finger. The balloon retains its shape because the pressure inside the balloon is atmospheric pressure and the pressure outside the balloon is less than atmospheric due to the closed hole. Air wants to rush into the lower pressure traveling through the hole into the bottle, but it is being blocked by the finger. When we remove the finger, air rushes to equilibrate the pressure on both sides of the balloon. Now the balloon is just like any other deflated balloon. Let's try again, blowing up the balloon, blocking the hole with tape, then filling the balloon with water. Look what happens when the tape is removed. This is kind of mean, Dr. Smith.
Here is one last activity. Let's see if you can figure it out. It is very difficult to push a straw through a potato, as Dr. Smith is finding out. However, if you hold the straw so that your thumb blocks the hole in the straw, the straw can easily travel through the potato. Why is that? That is because as the straw is pushed into the potato, the thumb is blocking the only exit for the air. As the straw passes through the potato, air pressure builds up inside the straw, making the sides of the straw very rigid, allowing it to travel straight through the potato. In this demonstration of atmospheric pressure, Dr. Smith is going to add water to an aluminum bottle. He is then going to heat the water in the aluminum bottle and get it to a boil. After he fills the can with steam, he's going to cap it and seal it tight. And now we wait and see what happens. As the steam condenses in the aluminum bottle, it creates a very low pressure. And atmospheric pressure crushes the aluminum bottle. Let's review. Due to gravity, 80% of Earth's air is below an altitude of 10 miles. Even though to get to outer space, you have to travel 300 miles. Atmospheric pressure is 14.7 pounds of pressure over every square inch. This pressure adds up fast. However, we do not feel the pressure because this atmospheric pressure also exists inside our bodies. The air pressure inside and outside of our bodies has equilibrated at 14.7 pounds per square inch.